want to bring up uh, a convener, a uh, host, for the opening address in this event. It is my pleasure to bring up the learned Vice Dean of Law, Professor Modisha. Is that how you want to plan? I almost said let somebody shout hallelujah. I forgot this is a law country. In any case, does somebody want to shout hallelujah? Thank you very much. The Dean of Law, sir. The erudite professor of rape law. Other professors of law, yes, attend. My chair, Ida Akwaibom State. My wonderful and learned colleagues. Wonderful students. I greet you. I'm indubitably elated to welcome you to this 2021 edition of Jurisprudence Symposium. Better about four years ago or so, the Jurisprudence Symposium has, over the space of time that it has come on board, been a shooting bomb and reinvigorating a league to students of law, especially contingents of the final year class, as far as demystifying jurisprudence as a sphere of study is concerned. The fear and trepidation that saturates the mind of an average student of law stems from the misconceived notion of jurisprudence being an endeavor that thrives in abstraction. The myth that trade jurisprudence includes, though not limited to, jurisprudence being an arid science, hence uninteresting, difficult, and completely at variance with the tenets obtainable and or discoverable in practical reality. This superstitious belief, quite sadly and regrettably, has been handed down by catalog of generations of law students who, in turn, inundate their successors with these fairy tales about jurisprudence. The idea of the jurisprudence symposium, therefore, became inescapably opposite in calming the nerves and assuaging the plights of the perfected mindsets of those students within the ambit and contemplation of jurisprudence as an academic field of study. And that noble effort, by sheer providence, now has a rich, albeit history, of four years. The rationale behind jurisprudence symposium, furthermore, was to complete the need in a change of the need for a change of pedagogical approaches to styles, encompassing live role plays alongside discourse analysis geared towards conceptual clarifications to the end of engendering fuller comprehension based on the intellectual communion shared therefrom. Jurisprudence, accordingly, is mirrored in the said live role plays which simulate practical life scenarios through the various schools of law, thereby both subtly and flagrantly bringing to our notice and attention the truism which is namely that jurisprudence is life itself. This year's edition tagged the harlotry of the law is as destructive as it is apt. By this uniquely engaging theme, law is conjectured as a phenomenon which anyone and everyone indulges based on the particular cognitive bias such a person or group of persons hold in it or their favor. Little wonder then for example, that it is only the party between the plaintiff and the defendant who adduces the weightier evidence that will have the judgment of the court in his or her favor, irrespective of what a particular party there to or a third party perceives as the truth of the matter. I may be to say that in the course of the sojourn of this jurisprudence symposium, my students of jurisprudence, dissatisfied with the status quo, 
prompted by the conventional schools of law, proposed and emerged with a nascent hybrid of the already known schools of law, which they christened the harmonization theory. The novelty of the harmonization theory is justified against the backdrop of the arguments by its proponents that there is an element of all the other schools of law in their newfound theory, and that the composite whole of what is referred to as the harmonization theory is represented by the bits and pieces of all the other schools of law, and more particularly delineated by emerging frontiers such as new jurisprudence, echo jurisprudence to mention but two, and that this particular school of law is the messiah for the quagmire, conundrum, and frustrating dilemma of the Nigerian question. How true their postulation is, however, is a puzzle only further time shall solve. Nevertheless, I use this medium to call on civil societies and organizations, non-governmental organizations, the government are taught tiers, leaders of thought, scholars, thinkers, the academia, the international community, and indeed all and sundry, to ruminate on the nascent and novelty of the proposed harmonization theory with the view of making it transcend a horse or to a workable, operational, tenable, and viable option towards the Nigerian Renaissance. Let all hands be on deck in giving the harmonization theory a pride of place and a place of pride in our body quality. Since today was not slated for long speeches, suffice it to say that myself, alongside my co-hosts, Dr. Hansen, very heartily welcome each and everyone here present in this state of the art amphitheater to this August occasion in June and implore you to have a most fascinating time because today's event promises to be worth every nickel. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you very much, the learned vice dean of law, Professor Mujishola Sen. Please, uh, this looks like the halotry of the lecture. Just take it out for those in the planning committee. Because I, I'm fine without the lecture, please. But once the dean has taken his address, we can go ahead and take it out. All right, when um, learned vice dean was speaking, she talked about, I heard the word communion. No. The woman of God cannot come to the pulpit and not talk about communion. So we're excited in this event. Um, I'm very confident that communion will be shared because the spirit of the law is here. For those who know what I'm talking about. All right, moving forward, I want to bring up the Dean of Law for his goodwill message. It is my pleasure this morning to bring the Dean of Law, University of Yale, Faculty of the University of Rio, Professor Anir Deepak. Please let's give him a hand. Please keep clapping for our sweetheart, please. Thank, thank you all. You're welcome. Every other protocol duly observed. First and foremost, we have to thank Almighty God for His enablement, for each and every one of us to gather here. We thank Him for His benevolence. I have to commend the initiator of this symposium Professor Moji Chola Esen, the Vice Dean of the Law and his uh, co-host Dr. Michael Hunter for this wonderful package it is a package that has given Faculty of Law, University of Rio, a very good image. And I commend them for that. I have to thank all the invitees 
who have come to great dislocation in spite of their crowded shadows. They are our amiable visitors. I welcome you all. I have to thank the students, particularly the year five class, who have been engaged to come up with this symposium. I have to thank my colleagues in the faculty of law, each and every one of them, those who are here, and those who are unavoidably absent. We are still expecting them to come. I have to thank other members of the university community who have been here to give elegance, to give ornaments, to give beauty, and to contribute, contribute their level of intellectual excellence in order to make this symposium tick. Allow and commend them all. You are welcome. Having said that, each and every one of you knows that the team of, the year, of this year's symposium is that the harlotry of the law. The harlotry of the law. The question is, who is that harlot? Have you seen any harlot before? I have seen one or two, but I have not done business with them. <laughs> I want to inform you that some halos could be very charming, very charming, very scintillating, very beautiful, very irresistible in their beauty. Is it also the gentleman? Do you want to take uh, uh, a speak the truth? Have you seen any beautiful halal before? You, you may not have seen. I have seen one or two. One of the halots I have seen is the law. Law has been severally defined. I know law to be an instrument of social engineering. Law, in a broader perspective, is an instrument of social engineering. In the words of a, jurisprud a jurisprudential writer, Savitni, those of you who have studied jurisprudence and international law, must have known or heard about the name Savitni. Savitni defined law thus. He said, law grows with the growth and strengthens with the strength of the people and finally dies away as a nation loses its nationality. Today, you will see that law grows with their growth, grows with the growth of the people and strengthened with their strength 
as you say, strengthen with the strength of the people. And he ended his definition of law by saying that law dies away as a nation loses its nationality. I don't want to wish you bad luck by witnessing how the law will die as a nation loses its nationality. If a nation loses its nationality, such a nation loses its sovereignty. The nation loses its sovereignty. But law, to me, grows with the growth of the people, strengthen with the strength of the people, and will not die as a nation loses its nationality. Because if law dies, That will be the end of the society. Law is used as an instrument of all that limits. It is used for the purpose of egalitarianism. It is used to achieve stability and social equilibrium or stability and social equipoise. It is used to regulate the relationship of the people. That is why we are seated here and there is no disorder. What binds us today here and creates orderliness is law. Without law, the society will be thrown into chaos and life among us will be struck brutish and insecure according to the words of FEDZ in the rule of law. The wisdom that has been bestowed on the initiator and his co-hosts to come up with this symposium and to use law as a harlot is irresistible. It is an un uncanny wisdom. Uncanny because it is unnatural. Because not every person will draw from different strata of society to package and to come up with a team that is apt, alluring, captivating, and beautiful. You don't want to clap for me. My check on you is that you, you are welcome. Sit down and sit down and see the beauty of the law. In the area of criminal law, between the accused person and the prosecutor, the law is always there. Depending on the fact of the case and the mastery of the law, the law is always there. And will tilt towards any person who uses it well. It could be the pros a prosecutor. And if the law, because it is an alert, Seals towards him, the accused person will be convicted. 
But if the law has the hand out of the day till toward that this person, that this person will be disguised and acquitted. The cause is also there to use the court, I mean to use the law. So whether the law is there for the court, for the accused person or the prosecutor, or for the defendants and the plaintiff, the law is there. That is why she is being described as the harlot. And I say that this law or this harlot is a very beautiful harlot. It is meant to bring peace or peaceful coexistence among individuals in the society, among groups, among uh, associations, among organizations. Let me stop there. I didn't come here to stagger your mind with your credential semantics. Just as the chief was did, she was speaking a lot of grammar, grammar, grammar. And uh, I remember when I was a student like you, one of our lecturers who taught us jurisprudence used to tell us that jurisprudence is science of the law. And I can see. I will not end this address without prophesying to you. Several years ago, I sat like you did or you are doing now as a student. And now, I am standing here as a professor of law. As a professor of rape law. Not a professor of rainbow. <laughs> you must qualify it well, professor of rape law. And I prophesy to you that tomorrow will be your turn. <laughs> I further prophesy to you that tomorrow you will also be a professor of jurisprudence. Or a professor in other area of the law. For our numerous invitees, I pray to God to give you function, good function for that matter, in which you will also invite eminent personality and they will honor you by praising you. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Please, one more time, let's give it up for the learned professor of law and the dean of law, Professor Amiri Bank. All right, at this juncture, I want to constitute members of the, um, the panelists, those who are going to be our judges in this event. Um, let me start with um, the lead judge. My pleasure to welcome to this other side of the divide, Dr. Idorin Ayo. Please let's give her a round of applause. Okay, I also want to recognize and also invite as a judge in this symposium, Dr. Eyangwe Ntekin. Please let's give her a round of applause. We also have 
Barrister Benjamin Ifani. Please let's give a round of applause from the University of Calabar. We also have to join that team from FIDA, Chairperson of FIDA Barrister in Etel. Let's give her a round of applause as she joins the team. As she joins the team. All right, I'm going to defer proceedings to the lead judge to just give us a little brief of what to expect. You know, in this event, I'm not under any pressure. But if I was sincerely class, I would be under pressure. I'm not under any pressure because no assessment is coming to me. Except under the prophetic function, they can say, I give you 10 marks in advance. And I will be very excited. Please, let's give it up 